Before I begin, I'd just like to acknowledge that this is First Nations territory that we're in. And I thank the First Nations for taking care of this land for all those thousands of years. You know, it's hard to recognize when something historic is happening. When uh, Ferdinand was assassinated, nobody said, oh, gee, this is the beginning of World War I. But you all know, I think, that you're a part of a great turning, a fundamental shift in the way that we live on this planet. Part of what's driving it is rising oil prices and peak oil. Part of it is our health that's being impacted by pollution. And part of it is a growing awareness of a new environmental understanding. that gives to democracy a future. Because a state who is totally dependent in, his, in, his, in the lifeblood for all, for all things, for civilization, for economy, this is energy. Without energy, nothing works. Um, um, a development in which governments become totally dependent, the whole society, from an energy supplier has nothing to do anymore with democracy because the future of such a country is not anymore in the hand of their own democratic institutions. And this is the present situation. Probably the thing that I find the most powerful is, uh, again, a German example. It's the, the plus energy houses uh, that were built by Rolf Ditch in, um, in Freiburg, so 58 houses, all of them very standard German middle-class townhomes. They cost about the same as a standard German class townhome. Every single one over the course of a year produces more energy than it consumes. So to my mind, I mean, uh, your house as a power plant, that is an extraordinarily powerful idea. Why the Renewable Energy the Act in Germany uh, worked, why it became so successful. We created a special energy market for renewables, which could not anymore become, uh, uh, which was not anymore interferable by the others. Uh, we created two or three elements. First element, a guaranteed access to the grid. A sec for each renewable energy power player, even if it is a very small one. A second, to give a guaranteed payment. Only with these two elements, um, we could overcome any interference of the power companies. The investments, uh, the investors had the opportunity to do it without asking for a permission, uh, for a permission by the conventional power players. They got investment autonomy. And therefore, and they had their back free to do that. Uh, they um, had no vested interest in the energy system. And the third element was not to make a cap, because only if there is no cap, there is an industrial development, there are industrial investments. Of, uh, these are uh, long-term investments. And these three elements created the dynamic we have in Germany. Only this. In anywhere where they've done the German-style feed-in tariff, one of the brilliant things about it is it's not a subsidy. It is a ratepayer um, uh, surcharge, basically. So it's not your tax dollars it, it, as a German consumer uh, that, are, that are feeding this, this, this sort of extra cost of, of, of solar and wind. Uh, it's it's you're just paying per kilowatt hour. What that means is whoever you know uses more energy uh, uh, pays more of their share. On top of that, you now have the opportunity as a German citizen to participate in producing energy for the first time in a very long time, and that can offset some of your costs. So so from the consumer or average taxpayer's point of view, it's an incredibly um, attractive offer. If you are a conventional energy producer uh, with hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars invested in the infrastructure of delivering. Um, these fuel sources, it's not so attractive. Therefore, the political art is to transform with the right policy, like the Renewable Energy Act, to transform the macroeconomic benefit into a microeconomic incentive, then the dynamic from and with the society starts. Because nothing can become implemented faster than renewable energies. We have a short installation time.
very short residual energies. We have a long construction time for power stations. Therefore, the argument is nonsense that we would need time. We need, uh, if we are in a race against time, we have the best opportunity to do it with decentralized renewable energy system. But why 100%? Because only then the justification is over uh, for investors, for conventional energies, or for governments that we would need we would need a new coal power stations or new uh, nuclear power stations. The justification is always that renewable energies are not enough or would not be enough, but it is enough. Look to Canada, that's my final remark, look to Canada. Or look to Ontario, I got the numbers in the morning. Uh, three, th roughly 30,000 megawatt electric power supply, electric power capacity production capacity. 10,000 is hydro already. 10,000 is hydro. That means you need 20,000 megawatts. 20,000 for replacing coal and nuclear. 20,000 megawatts. In a country which is like Ontario, which is three times larger than Germany. Germany has 350,000 square kilometers and 85 million people. We are highly industrialized. We are export champion for industrial goods in the world. But uh, we could, with a small area, introduce nearly 25,000 wind power capacities in uh, roughly 10 years. Roughly 10 years. That means it is easy to show. With, uh, if you take the most modern wind mills with a higher individual capacity, you, we could show, it is possible to show for Canada, that within five years you could substitute 20,000 megawatt nuclear and coal and um, combine it with the existing hydropower. Nothing is better technologically, complementary, than hydropower from dams with wind. Because then you have solved all reserve problems if there is sometime not enough wind. Then you take one turbine more and you have it. With uh, such a background of one third large hydropower in dams, it is totally easy to come to 100% resolution by wind power investments within five years. Where is the problem? The problem is in the mines. It is not a technological problem, it is not an economic problem. The problem is only in the mines. And problems and barriers in the mines could be can overcome all of us very fast because it is just getting the information, getting uh, the recognition of that, of the real alternative. That means we have the perspective and we should run and then we can win the future. Thank you very much.